Hello and welcome to Boring Dad Gaming, where today I'm going to be taking a look at another class within the Baldur's Gate 3 Early Access, and today we're going to be taking a look at Ranger. Uh, there's a couple of interesting possibilities with Ranger, but uh, I think for this first video we're going to look at uh, an archery ranger. You can also build them to be very good uh, dual-wielding fighters, and I'll do a, probably a second video looking at that build, but today we're going to look at the archery, uh, you know, build for, for Ranger. So, first thing to think about is our background, and I've gone with Outlander here, reason being that athletics is quite useful. We we won't have a lot of strength, but, you know, it's still something that can help us resist shoving and sort of, um, you know, running, jumping, I think that sort of thing, so that can be quite good. Uh, survival as well will tie in with Wisdom, which is something we're going to have a decent amount of. Um, if you were to select something like Folk Hero, where you'd also have the animal handling and survival, uh, that'd probably be okay. I, don't, I didn't find, in the early access anyway, I didn't find a lot of use for the animal handling uh, ability. I think there is perhaps one instance where it might be useful, but, um, but we're going to go with Outlander. There we go. Now race, there's uh, a couple of decent options. Um, perhaps the second, secondary of which would be uh, a Halfling. Uh, strong heart halfling. You get uh, dexterity plus two, and you get a plus one to constitution, which is always nice. Dexterity is going to be our, our main attacking attribute. Get a few things here. You get lucky as an innate race feature. So when you roll a one for an attack roll, ability check, saving throw, uh, you're innate, you're able to re-roll the dice. That's actually quite nice. Uh, I don't know how often you can do that. Maybe it's once per long rest. I'm not sure. I'd be surprised if it was every time. Uh, brave. So we have advantage on saving throws against being frightened, which is quite cool. Some resilience, advantage on saving throws against poison and poison damage. Uh, a bit slower than other classes, which is kind of the trade-off there. So that, that's an okay choice. Um, but I'm going to be going with Wood Elf again. You get the Dexterity plus two, and you also get Wisdom, which is important for rangers, because that's your uh, spellcasting ability. What else do we get? We get keen, centers, uh, keen Senses, so we're proficient in Perceptions, pretty good. You know, we've got the short sword proficiency for dual wielding if we wanted it. We've got longbow and shortbow proficiency, dark vision, uh, the fey ancestry, so resistant to, um, well, advantage on saving throws against being charmed, can't be put to sleep. Uh, we're a lot quicker, fleet of foot there, so we're, you know, three meters more movement than the uh, halfling had. Mask of the wild, we have proficiency in stealth, which can be quite useful. So this is, this is a good choice, and this is the one we're going to be going with. Uh, appearance. I wish that is there like a randomized button. I just make them look a bit different. Uh, I think we'll change the the skin tone perhaps. Just make it look a bit more natural. Um, class we've selected range already. So here we're going to start looking at um, some of our choices. Favored enemy. I think this works a little different to the tabletop version where you can specify things like giants or orcs or goblins, whatever. You've got five choices here. We have bounty hunter, which is probably the one we're going to be going with. Um, this gives us proficiency in investigation, which is nice. It's a nice thing to have proficiency in. We don't have high intelligence, so our rolls on it probably won't be very good. Um, but the ensnaring strike is the important part of this. Uh, it's going to be a spell that we take, and it means that they're going to creatures that we hit with that are going to have disadvantage on their saving throws. So we should be landing most of those. You have Keeper of the Veil, so you get proficiency in Arcana. You can cast Protection from Evil and Good, which is which is all right. Mage Breaker. Again, we get the Arcana and True Strike cantrip, giving us advantage on attack rolls. Uh, that's okay. Ranger Knight, you get armor, heavy armor use, which is okay, I think. Uh, but Sanctified Stalker is probably the second most popular one here, I think. You get the um, Sacred Fame cantrip, although I've found that the, the hit chance for that is, is fairly low. So that's why I'm going with Bounty Hunter. I think it's got good uh, advantages there. Natural Explorer. So we've got a few choices here as well. I think probably what we're going to go with is Beast Tamer, because we can uh, get ourselves a familiar, which can help us out in combat. That's pretty good. Um, Urban Tracker. You get Sleight of Hand Proficiency. If you're thinking of being more of a, a thief kind of class, that might be something that you take. Um, if you're not planning on having a Starion in the party, for instance, to help with um, picking locks and stuff, maybe you'd take that. Um, and then these are all kind of resistance to a specific type of damage. But I think Beast Tamer is the, the far and away the best one here. Uh, so there we go. That's our class. Look at skills. We're going to... We've actually got all these skills ticked. Um, is there anything we, we don't... 
Yeah, I mean, we might as well take all those. There's no real choice there, is there? You just get everything. That's fine. Uh, and abilities then. So we want our dexterity to be very high. We can probably actually get it to 16 and we'll just level that up um, at level 4 to 18. I think we can get rid of a bit of strength. Uh, wisdom we want fairly high. Uh, again, for uh, the spells we cast. Charisma is probably okay where it is. Uh, we can maybe put a point into constitution there. So we get a bit more hit points. So we've got... Um, we could take strength down even further. We won't really be using it, but again, just as I've said in previous videos, um, if you have eight as strength, it makes sort of carrying your own gear and looting and stuff a, a bit more problematic just because you're constantly swapping things between inventories. Whereas with ten, maybe you've got a, a bit more ability to carry stuff. Um, so there we go. So when we come back, we're going to look at levelling the Archer Ranger up to levels two, three, and four. Okay, so here we are at level 2, and this is where you can sort of choose which type of ranger you're going to be. As already stated, we're going to go down the archery route for this build. Um, next time, next video, we'll be looking at two weapon fighting. Uh, so for now, let's take that. Got a couple of choices with spells. We're going to keep Hunter's Mark. That's a bonus action spell. It does use a spell slot, um, but you can cast it on a creature and do an extra d6 of damage to it with a weapon attack. In fact, it's uh, every time you hit it with a weapon attack. So if you're putting it on a, a strong or a boss creature or something, you know, every single attack you do is going to have bonus damage. That's pretty cool. Uh, speak with animals. Um, I guess this can be sort of a fun ability to take. I can only really think of one quest involved in the early access where you'd use this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deselect it. And I'm going to take that ensnaring strike that we spoke about before. I'm going to take those two. And that's it for level two. Okay, here we are leveling up to level 3, and again we've got a, a choice of what to do here. Uh, the Hunter, we can add some quite powerful abilities to our attacks uh, in specific circumstances, uh, or Beastmaster, which is where you get um, a, a companion animal. Um, I, think that, I think that's quite a cute choice, it's probably going to be the more popular choice, getting yourself an animal to travel around with. Um, I'm going to go down the Hunter's route though for one of these abilities that I mentioned. Um, Colossus Slayer is good. Uh, once per turn we can deal an extra 1d8 damage if the target's below its hit point maximum. And when we're getting, when we're able to follow up a ranged attack with uh, an offhand melee attack, um, you know, we can hit it with an arrow, take its health down, then uh, then use this Colossus Slayer, and it's going to be doing, our offhand attack's going to be doing an extra up to 8 points of damage, which is pretty cool. Or you've got Horde Breaker, where you can target two creatures standing next to each other and attack them in quick succession. Um, I mean, it's really which one you you prefer. I mean, Colossus Slayer is something you can do with any enemy. Horde Breaker is perhaps slightly more situational in that you need multiple enemies and you need them to be standing pretty close together. Um, so I'm going to take Colossus Slayer, I think. Uh, we can customize our spell take. Um, I'm actually going to deselect this long jump and we're going to take a, a heal. I think, um, depending on your party composition, you may not have a lot of healing in it, so that's maybe something worth taking. And there we go, that's level 3. And here we are at level 4, and this is uh, a pretty easy thing to do. We're going to just take 2 points of dexterity there. So our dexterity is now 18, we're getting a plus 4 modifier to our uh, attacks and damage, well not damage, but our attacking throws. Um, and it's generally looking, looking pretty strong there in its um, primary stats, so we're going to accept that. And when we come back we'll see how we get on in a fight. Okay, so here we are at the battle outside the Druid's Grove against the goblins. Uh, the first thing we're going to try and do, I think, is clear this goblin tracker who's up here with us, as he's uh, quite an annoying enemy to fight. So we're going to put our hunter's mark on him. And we're going to see if we can kill him in one turn. 80% uh, chance to hit. That's good odds. And they're dead. Uh, that's all we can do for this turn. We're going to stay up here. Uh, maybe we'll get a bit close to the edge. Um, and we'll end it there. Okay, it's our turn again. There's a few targets we could use. I've actually taken down the Booyag, who I was going to choose, um, as they, they're quite good at putting the sleep spell on, on people. What we can do instead, we're going to reapply the Hunter's Mark, and let's put it on Zakrug, the goblin boss. So he's one of the tougher enemies. Um, and we'll get a shot away at him. Only 72% chance to hit. Hopefully we'll be successful. And we are. only did 6 damage overall, which is a bit on the low side, honestly, but... Okay, so it's our go again. Um, we're going to target this bugbear. Now he is, he has, he has a maximum health, so I'm hoping that we might see uh, a big damage applied to him. Uh, perhaps we should so see what this um, 
Ensnaring Strike can do though, so let's actually use that first. Imperial Tibby. There we go. We failed the saving throw, so he's ensnared. Uh, we did a decent amount of damage as well. Back to us. Um, they've actually put loads of ice surfaces down. Uh, so I think... Oh, we actually gain advantage because... Uh, I think we had disadvantage because he was prone. But we've gained advantage because he's ensnared. So that gives us a good chance to hit him with this. And get the kill. Wow. That can't have been 94 damage, or was it? It must have been 9 and 4. Because <laughs> otherwise that was huge. Um... I'm going to bring us down because if that warg survives, I'd like to show you the, the follow up uh, melee strike. Uh, but it didn't, so that was it. That was it for the fight. Um, I think we played a, a fairly good part in that. Uh, showed you the ensnared, how the hunter's mark works. Um, so, yeah, so Ranger's a, a pretty nice class. Archery is a, a good route to take if you're playing one. Um, I'll just quickly show you the familiars that you can have. I didn't use them in the fight. But each familiar you can cast has a different effect. So spiders um, can poison enemies. Ravens can blind enemies. Rats can spread disease. I'm not quite sure how that manifests. Uh, frog covered with dizzying toxins. Um, not sure what they do. A crab can slow enemies. And a cat can act as a distraction. I find the ravens quite a good choice. He's only got to, they've only got one health, but you can kind of... Uh, choose Rend Vision and then send them off uh, towards an enemy. They have a decent amount of movement. Um, and yeah, Inflict Blind, which if we just inspect it here... It doesn't, it doesn't really... Oh, here we go. Blinded. Ranged attacks have a range of 4.5 meters, so if it's a ranged enemy, uh, you know, they can't attack you beyond a few meters. Attack rolls have disadvantage, and attack rolls against blinded creatures have advantage. So that's quite a good way to, to gain advantage um, in combat by blinding them with the raven uh, familiar. So there we go. I hope it was useful. If it was, then please do hit the like button on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. And I'll see you next time uh, for the next ranger guide. Bye for now.